So this guide isn't just the advanced guide on conversions. This is actually a five-step system that I've used over and over and over again across YouTube ads, across Facebook ads, across every person I've helped scale their business with ads. I apply this five-step hack. I know that sounds markety. I know that sounds gimmicky. Just bear with me. But it's literally a checklist of factors that I look at in every single ad, every single landing page, every single sales message. And by applying this, I've been able to make tens of millions of dollars from ads off of much less than that in ad spend. The reason for that is because it focuses on the number one most important thing that ads working, people doing what you want them to do. If you apply these five things, this is actually 10, but this is five. If you apply these five things to your ads and to everything you're doing, you are going to consistently get people to do a lot more of what you want them to do. Click, buy, do a handstand. You could probably get someone to do a handstand with this, or maybe even go out on a date with you. Just kidding. You ad buyers, you guys are gross. All right, you gotta stick to making money because that's all you got, I'm just kidding. So that being said, let's just dive in this because if you apply this to your ads, you're going to see huge gains in every area. Whenever I'm helping people in my Iron Mastermind group go and grow their ads, by the way, you can check that out below after this video is done. Literally what I'm doing 90% of the time is running this checklist on everything they're doing. If they follow this checklist, they usually do really well. If they don't, they don't do very well. So take this checklist and use it. I'm not even gonna make you pay for it. Let's look at it. So guys, what you're looking at right here is a page that has done an obscene amount of money. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that to toot my horn or anything, but Iris is a pretty successful company and where all the sales came from is this page. But more so where all the sales came from, from our advertising and how they converted is the understanding that this page represents. Now I could show you our sales pages, I could show you our sales call scripts, heck I'll even talk about that in the channel in the future if you guys wanna get into that. But what you need to understand is why these pages convert and really what makes people do anything when it comes to presenting a product online. So I've actually broken it down in five steps that you can actually go below this video and look at. But whenever you're making any sales page and you're running it on Facebook, you're running it on YouTube, the number one thing with your ads is that what you're offering that they're going to gain from the ad is expressed in this way, whether it's your sales page or more importantly, uh, your opt-ins are the starts of your funnel. If you're going to look at any, 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 any good sales page that has worked on Facebook or YouTube, you're going to look at any good opt-in, they all have this. And I want to show you to show you this on this page because it's just so simple because the page is so simple. So the first thing you wanna make sure that every single thing you send traffic to has is it presents a desired result, a clear desired result, more importantly, that is important to the target demographic. Most times when I see people sending people to an opt-in page, it's not really offering a, a clear result, okay? So how we get sales 52% cheaper from ads. That is the clear result right there. Reduced cost 32%, increased ad conversion by 22%. Allowed us to acquire customers 52% cheaper using Hyros tracking. Okay, which again is true. If you're not on Hyros, especially after the iOS update, I don't know what you're doing. It's, it's costing you so much money to run ads, way more than it should. Okay, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just being lit on fire if you have even a decently sized company. But more importantly, you can see how clear the result is on this page. If you look at your, uh, your ad or your opt-in, <clears throat> and people are able to hit the page and there's not something that clearly states what result they're going to get. It's not going to do well. Next needs to be in a suggested fast time frame. Now, does this mean you should promise that people are going to get rich quick or something like that on your page? Well, I mean, if you do, if you are selling make money online marketing or you're selling some gimmicky stuff like that, which I'm not hating on you, but if you do sell, if you sell something gimmicky that offers people results way too quickly, you know who you are and you know why you do that because it works. Now, look, there's many ways to do this without saying, hey, you're gonna make a billion dollars in 30 days. So you can see what I actually do right here, using a copy and paste tracking script. The reason why I say this right here is because when people think about copy and paste, they think about, hey, it's easy and it's quick and easy to do. That's why when people say, hey, get this refrigerator and you'll be cool in your food in the time it takes you to plug it in. Okay. If you look at any good offer, it talks about how fast and easy the person can get the result. Now, the thing is like, for example, with Hyros and many other products, people can get the result quickly. If you send people, I don't know, uh, organ meats, okay. They're going to be eating healthy meats quickly, instantly, just as soon as they can put it in their microwave. So 
what you want to find some way to do in any type of marketing that you're doing is find some way to connect the result to it being fast and easy because people want the washing machine. Let me explain what that means. In any type of any business model, people don't want to learn how to manually wash their dishes. They want something they can plug in and get the result right away. We usually think people are lazy and they don't want to do all the extra steps. And that's a hundred percent true. If I told you, you had to actually learn about how a cooling unit works in order to cool your house with an AC unit, a lot less people would buy AC units. All people want is something that they can plug in and instantly cools their home In every aspect of their life. They want it to be that push button simple. You need to find a way to express that. Okay. If the person can get a result quickly and easily, you're going to have their interest, but there's so much more to that. Now, in order to really get people to react, what you need to make people feel is FOMO. And this is very hard to do in marketing, but if you can do it, you're going to be working with pretty much the best sales tactic of all marketing. It's, it's enough to get entire nations to invest their money in GameStop. It's FOMO. It's the most powerful thing in the entire world, in theory, in marketing. I'm sure there might be some more powerful marketing tactics. That being said, you want to find some way to express that the result is being had with something that's a new opportunity that, that they should know about that they've missed out on. A new opportunity that they should know about, but they've missed out on. That is the most powerful thing to get people to react ever. So for example, in my niche, I know that people that run ads, they're very well aware that AI controls the optimization of ads. And so Hyrus does a lot of things. It tracks people's ads so that they can easily go and get a better ROI by making decisions, but it also feeds the data back into the AI of the ad platform so their targeting gets better. I focus on that second part more than the first part because that gets people excited and they don't clearly understand what it is, but they think they should know about it and it seems like a new opportunity, which it all is. That being said, when I was selling uh, Shopify courses back in the day, what I would do when explaining it is I wouldn't present it as Shopify because people knew what Shopify was, or at least they had some premise of it. And the premise wasn't good because there's hundreds of Shopify YouTube channels out there showing all sorts of crazy stuff about Shopify. I didn't want to offer them something that they knew about because that doesn't seem like a new opportunity that they've missed out on. It seems like something old that's been used up and is saturated. So what I did is I would talk about it before ever mentioning Shopify is talk about it as a tactic that 7-Eleven and Walmart have been using to make easy profits by shipping stuff in from China. Okay. Uh, which is pretty much exactly true. If you go and look at most drop shipping stores, and most Shopify stores, they're selling the same things you see actually over the counter in 7-Eleven. But I explained it in that way to create a lot more interest with people and they go, whoa, whoa, what's this new method? So when I see really good real estate ads, they don't talk about how to make money in real estate. They talk about how to make money by taking advantage of this new tax loophole that Joe Biden's administration just put forward. Now, are they going to get into talking about making money with real estate and flipping houses with real estate? Yes, but that's not the way they present the idea to pique people's interest. You'll notice in health, fitness, working out. There has been thousands of workout courses, and I assume that maybe 5% of them at least have solved the way that humans need to exercise to get workout gains. So why do people keep buying new workout courses? Because they want the new thing. They want the new opportunity. They want what they've been missing out on. That's why the flavor of the month in health goes from uh, acai, berries, acai berries, I can't pronounce it, to collagen, to whatnot. So whenever you're writing your copy or selling something online, it always needs to seem like a new opportunity, even if it's not. <clears throat> And frankly, it doesn't even matter if it is or not, because the reason why we're presenting as a new opportunity is not to go and scam someone and make them think they're buying something they're not. It's to get someone's attention at first. Then you can always explain it with like, hey, this loophole that has been being used, yeah, that is Shopify. This loophole that's being used, yeah, it is collagen, but you need to understand exactly why this is so huge. Okay, and so what you're doing is you're attracting attention by presenting as a new opportunity, but you can always sell the old opportunity. What people do when they come to a page or anything is they, they bring their own existing beliefs about it. So if people have seen a thousand Dr. Axe collagen ads, they're going to already have tons of ideas about what it is and think they already understand it. That understanding is usually not what you're selling or, or not even connected to the benefit of what you're trying to do for people. So it's just way better to present it as a new opportunity. And then once they understand it, then you can start calling it by its actual name. Okay. 
That's just some general tips. At Hyros, for example, we actually do help people's AIs target better, okay? But it just fits into that category of what I just described very well. Then finally, with what I just said right there, it has to sound realistic. If you make something up like how to use the, the KIS handstand method to go and get some crazy result, it's not gonna sound realistic. It has to sound like something that would actually legitimately exist. That's why I love using tax codes. That's why I use, love using references to that technology and existing brands and companies that already exist so that the authority is already there. If you look at a lot of ads where people are doing like stock investing, they don't talk about uh, this is the brand new wave of crazy crypto stocks. They talk about this is what Jeff Bezos just existed in or invested in. They talk about things that already have attached authority to them. So we actually covered two things right there. That it needs to seem like something new and then it's something they're missing out on. And finally, the last thing you need to have it have is it needs to seem easy to apply. Copy and paste tracking script. If you can go and put all these things into your opt-ins, into your pitches, into your sales videos, you are going to keep people's attentions and you're going to get them to buy because these are the reasons why people buy things very, very quickly. If people believe it's gonna get them a result, in a short time frame, they feel like they're missing out and it's a new opportunity and then it's easy to apply, you're going to do super well with ads. And there's nothing else I can really add to this video. There's, this is the key to almost all copywriting. If you just have these five things laid out in front of you as you're writing your opt-ins, your sales videos, or any ads that you're making, you're going to do super well. I really suggest after this video is done, you check out some of the other ad training videos on here. For example, I have huge breakdowns of my YouTube ad scripts, my Facebook ad scripts on this channel. And if you even want help building your ads and scaling your business on YouTube, book a call with me below. I have more six, seven, and eight figure results than any YouTube coach, I'm pretty sure ever. On top of that, if you're not tracking your ads right now with Hyros, losing so much money. You should, you should check out at least how High Rose works below. That being said, check out all the cool videos on this channel. Be sure to subscribe because I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This has been Becker. Take it easy.